All right, so now we're going to be covering bash scripting. So the first thing we're going to need to cover before we get into writing our scripts is how to narrow down results. And when we say narrowing down results, what we're saying is for given a block of text and we want to extract some information from that block of text, how are we going to do that? So that's what we're going to cover in this lesson. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to be doing today is narrowing down a ping result. So if we come into here and we need to ping an IP address within our system. So I'm going to be pinging 192.168.1.90. And you're going to see that it returns a 64 bytes from that address. So it looks like we're getting a response. I'm going to hit control C here. So if you remember from the networking section, we actually get a response unlimited until we cancel it, right? Like we just controlled C here from ping. So there's another thing that we can do if we only want to send one packet and see if it's uh, alive or not, we can do a dash C of one. So we're just going to do that. So that's a count of one. We're sending one packet over. If we set 10, it would send 10 packets over if that makes sense. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put this into a text file. So if you remember from previous video, we just use this little carrot here and I'm going to call this ip.text. Okay. And if we cat ip.text, you'll see the same results there. So now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to narrow this down. What do I want to extract from here? Well, I want to extract this IP address and it'll make more sense when we get into the scripting part. But what we're going to do is we're going to get out specifically of this, this IP address from this line. Now, what we're interested in actually is a returned IP address that has a valid response, right? So if I were to tech or if I were to enter in here, say 15.90, okay, there's no response there. So this is kind of what it looks like when it doesn't get a response back. It just kind of lingers. And then we hit control C and it says zero ping statistics, right? Nothing was, was received back. So what we see when we get a response back is we see 64 bytes. When there's no response back, we don't have any bytes. So if we're doing a sweep through a network, which we're going to be doing later, we need to be able to narrow down these results. So if we're sending, say, um, 192.168.1.1 all the way through 255, and we want to see who responds back and then take that list and narrow it down to the IP addresses, which is exactly what we're going to be doing, we need to know how to narrow that down. So what we're going to be narrowing down on specifically is the 64 bytes. So let's tab up a couple times to this cat IP address and we're going to do a pipe and the pipe just means we're going to add an additional command here. So the additional command we're going to do is called grep. Grep is going to grab any line with what you specify. So let's specify 64 bytes and see what happens. See now, if you noticed, we had all of these lines before. And now what grep is doing is grep is taking only the lines that contain 64 bytes. So again, a valid response. So we have 64 bytes here and we have achieved a response. So what we're going to do now is we're going to narrow this down some more. Okay. We've got this line here, but again, we're still trying to extract this IP address. So how can we do that? Well, there is a tool called cut. So if we tap up again and we do another pipe because we're sending a new command, we're going to say cut and cut syntax looks like this. And I'll explain it once I type it out here. Okay. So we have cut and then this hyphen D that's a delimiter. So the delimiter is what we're going to be cutting on. So we're giving a delimiter of a space, meaning here's a space. Here's a space, here's a space. So we're going to be cutting on these spaces and then we give a field. We say, okay, what field do we want to retrieve back from this cut? Okay. We want field four. If you look one, two, three, four, and the fourth field is our IP address. So it's going to say, okay, I'm going to cut on this space. I'm going to cut on this space. I'm going to cut on this space and then I'm going to take it right here. Now, if we identified field five, we would be taking this. If we identified field three, we'd be taking from. 
So let's go ahead and just hit enter and see what that looks like. Okay, so now we are narrowed down even more. But there's an issue here. If we were to try to send this IP address, we would have this little colon here attached onto it and you can't ping with that IP address. So if we're gonna be doing a sweep or narrowing down this list, then we're gonna actually need to remove this guy here. So let's take a look at how we do that. So if we tap up again, and again, we're gonna add a pipe. Now we're gonna use a command called TR. And TR just means translate. And what we're gonna be doing is another delimiter. So dash D there, and we're gonna be taking out that colon. So it should look something like this. And if we hit enter, now you can see that that colon has been removed. Okay, now let's talk about how we can use this information to write out a script. We're gonna start with a basic script and we can add upon it as we go. So I've gone ahead and written out a script, but we're gonna talk about it very slowly so you can actually look at it and copy it down. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and say gedit, and I call this ipsweep.sh. So go ahead and do the same or something similar and hit enter. So let's take a look at this script. So at the very top here, we have to declare what we're doing. So we're gonna give a hash bang and we do this with any scripting language. So if this were Python, we'd be entering Python here, but this is bash. So we're gonna be doing a forward slash bin forward slash bash that declares that we're running a bash script. And the dot sh also indicates that we're running a bash script. So I want you to ignore this line here and this line here for now. Let's talk about this line. This should look very, very familiar. So what we're doing in this line, we are saying we're gonna ping with a count of one, which we talked about, and then we're gonna do something here. We've got a dollar sign one and a dollar sign IP. Let's just ignore that for now. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do the rest. That should look familiar. We're gonna say, we're gonna grep 64 bytes. We're gonna cut the delimiter of a space, feel the floor, and then we're going to do a translate, right? And take off that little bit at the end. Okay, I added an ampersand here at the end. So an ampersand allows us to do threading. So that's exactly why it's in there. If we didn't, we'd have to let the process go one IP at a time. And we'll talk about that in a second as well. So let's talk about this for line. So a for loop is what we're actually running here. And the loop is saying, I want to do an IP address. We're just declaring a variable here. You can call it whatever you want. But we're saying, hey, for this IP in a sequence of one through 254, we're gonna do something and that do is a ping. So what this means is for IP, and if we think about it in sequence one through 254, what it's saying is one, two, three, four, all the way up to 254. Okay, so think about it this way. If we say for one, in this ping sweep, we're gonna do that, right? So we're gonna say four, one, four, two, four, three, all the way through 254. That's what this loop is doing. So it's a very, very simple loop. Now, IP is replaced down here at the very end. Now we're also calling out this dollar sign one. Now this dollar sign one is user input. So we're gonna actually do something. This is called IP sweep, right? So we're gonna to have to call out this IP sweep, something like this, dot sh, and then we're gonna to have to give out some information. It's gonna request information. If we don't provide it, it won't know how to ping. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say the first three octets of our home network. So if yours is 192.168.1, like mine is, then you just enter 192.168.1. Now, we could also, for simplicity, just hard code this. So we can say 192.168.1.ip address, and it would be fine. We don't have to build this in. The only reason we're not hard coding it is because you can do multiple ping sweeps. This can be a ping sweep script for you in the future if you're on a different network or you just wanna write something out really quick. Dollar sign one works perfect. Um, but if you wanna leave it hard coded like this, it'll also work. So let's go ahead and just delete this out. I'm going to put this into dollar sign one again to have a proof of concept. And then we are going to run this. So all we do here at the end is declare done. If we didn't run this with an ampersand here, we would have to add a semicolon similar to this. But because we are having an ampersand, we can actually get rid of that 
and just put that back just for some syntax clarity here. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. And remember from our lesson, we're gonna have to change the mode of our script because it's not executable by default. So we're gonna do a plus X here and then we're gonna call out ipsweep.sh. We can ls and make sure it's green. Here's ipsweep.sh. And then we'll do a dot forward slash ipsweep.sh. And I'm not gonna enter anything in. I just wanna show a proof of concept. So see, it ran through every single number here in threading and name or service not known because we didn't provide an IP address. So what we can do here is we need to provide that IP address, 168.1, hit enter. Okay, and it pulls back some information. So what we can do with this information, let's write this out to a file. So let's just call this IP list dot text, something like this. Okay, it's done. Now let's just cat out the IP list.txt. Okay, now we have an IP list of the IPs in our network that we just swept, right? And we can use this information later on. But before we go into that, I do want to go back and just improve our script a very, very tiny bit. So let's go ahead and just tab up a couple times till we get to our G edit. And let me show you how we can improve this script. It doesn't have to be overly complicated. What we can do is we can say something like this. We can come in here and give an if statement. So an if is conditional, right? We're going to say if this exists, then do something. And if it doesn't exist, do something else. So we're going to say if dollar sign one is equal to nothing, we're just going to give blank space here. And then we're going to say, then we want to do something. So what are we going to do? We can echo out something similar to you forgot an IP address and then echo out what you need to do like syntax dot slash ping sweep or IP sweep is what we call this IP sweep dot SH and then IP or we can even write it out an example, right? Like something like that. So that way our user, if they're using it, we wrote this for somebody else, they know what we're talking about. And at the very end, we just need to write if backwards, we'll put a FI. So what this is saying is if this is not, then echo here, right? We're gonna echo these. And then we need to add one other thing here, which is an else. Let's go ahead and hit enter just to space this out a little bit. So. If we have no dollar sign one declared, right? If we have nothing entered in, we're gonna say echo, you forgot an IP address and syntax here. If we do have something in dollar sign one, okay, we're gonna do something else. We're gonna do our ping sweep and that's it. So this is very similar and modified from Georgia Weidman's that I've got a long time ago. So full credit goes to her for this little script. It was very, very easy to learn and it's also very easy to teach. So let's go ahead and just run this one more time. We're gonna say ipsweep.sh and look what happens. Now it says you forgot an IP address. Now we can declare a number in there or anything and the script's not perfect, right? We're expecting three octets and we could give it a one and it's still gonna do something like that, which isn't correct, right? Um, so we need to be able to to modify this down more, but that gets really advanced scripting into declaring that it needs to be three octets, and if you don't provide those, then what? Um, and that just gets more advanced. So we really just need to know, hey, what we're doing here, very basic script for ourselves and something to remember. Okay, so let's clear our screen. Last thing I wanna show you. So we've been able to write a script out, but we can also do looping in one line, and this is where it becomes kind of fun. So we have this IP list, right? We did a cat IP list.txt. Now let's say we've got this IP list together and we want to do an nmap scan on all of these IPs. Now we could just say nmap and type in the syntax you want and the IP address of it um, for every single one of these, start a new tab and let that happen. Or you could do something in a for loop. So we can write the same for loop that we did before we're gonna say for IP. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna write a dollar sign 
and we're going to cat the IP list dot text. So all it does is it's bringing out this list that we have here and it's saying, okay, for this IP, this IP, this IP, et cetera, we're going to run through all of these. That's what the loop does, right? Okay. We're going to do our semicolon and then we're going to tell it to do something, right? So what do we want to do? Okay. Let's run an nmap script. So we're going to say do nmap and we'll ping or we'll do a port port 80 uh, on all of these and we'll say stealth scan that on port 80 and we'll do T4 for a speed and that should be it. So then we can do done like this and let it run through one at a time. We can also do the ampersand and let it run multiples like this. We could hit enter and see what that does. But I also forgot one thing here. Forgot to declare the IP address. So let's talk about it real quick. So we've got a very, very simple one liner and you're going to see one liners a lot if you get into ethical hacking and just allows us to do things quickly and scripted. So we got four IP address in this list. So every IP in this list, we're going to loop through. When we do that loop, we're going to do nmap. We're going to do a quick stealth scan of port 80 T4. And we're going to say, declare the IP address. If you're not comfortable with nmap, that's okay. This is purely an example and something you will see in your career. Uh, I will make a scripting video at some point for nmap and we'll cover nmap more in detail. So let's go ahead and just hit enter. Okay. I messed up my syntax. So what is going on? Okay. So for IP in, this got deleted for IP in cat IP list. Let's try this one more time. Okay. So we just did all these scans, seven scans at once. And what we did is you see, these are the processes that are starting. So it started up eight processes, actually not seven. And it's just running through this list, doing the scans. And we're going to go ahead and just kind of look at it. So it says, okay, on 1.74 is 80 open. It's open. Okay. And then on 254 is 80 open. It's open. And then you see filter down here where it's not running filtered, filtered, same thing. So we can hit control C or hit enter if we're done. And that's pretty much it. So what we just did is we ran eight MMAP scans at one time instead of having to copy and paste these. So that's just a little bit of what scripting can do. Um, it does get more advanced, but to be able to know a one line for loop is really, really important if you go into penetration testing. And it's just important in basic bash scripting as well. So that's really it for this lesson. And that's really it for this course. So I hope you really learned something from this course. If you did find it valuable, please do share it with others. Please subscribe. If you haven't, please do like the video. Word of mouth is the best thing for me. It helps me grow my channel and helps me give content back to you as I get more feedback and I grow as a channel. So I'm looking to do more courses in the future and appreciate you taking time with me. And if you like this course and you want to chat with me, check the descriptions down below. I've got a Discord channel. We've got quite a few people in there. And I've also got a Twitter if you want to hit me up there. Lastly, I do have a Patreon if you felt like this course is valuable and you would like to support me. Uh, any dollar amount goes a long way for me. Recording equipment, um, recording software, all of that's very expensive. And the time spent on this is also uh, very detailed, long hours. So if you want to support me or, or anything, a like, subscribe, etc., goes a long way. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this course. And until the next one, thank you so much for joining me.